my kids are at the age they take showers. <laughs> Very long ones. I don't condone it, but it is what it is. My one son takes them in the dark. One day after his third shower, I had to confront him. I was like, hey man, I just want you to know, I know what you up to while you in there. No, dad, no, dad, no, dad. I'm just sitting there thinking. Well, I know what you're thinking about. And when you're done, make sure you collect all your thoughts. No one wants to be in the tub slipping on your ideas. Hi, thank you for coming to Star Net Studios. I am Andre Tucker. Today I'm talking to a comedian who spent his time visiting a lot of different places around the country, making his stops on his tours. I'm speaking to Mr. Kevin Bozeman. How you doing today, Kevin? I'm good. What's up? You you don't go by Dre. You just go by Andre. You got to go by Dre. You know what? Right? Hey, you know rules? what? I've been called Dre. I've been called Andre. Dre is just fine. Dre is just fine. That, that, Anybody that, ever call you Odd? No, no, no. You know what? No, not no, 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 no. Just well, Dre usually. You, that's your new name I'm, with me. Yeah, it depends that's, who I'm talking that's to. How, that's how I'm. That's how I'm rolling. You, your new name with me is On. On. Change okay. Okay. You All know, right? I'll, I'll take. So get it. rid of the Dre part and keep the I. Everybody always calling you Dre. Be on go with On, because then that other part of your name needs some love too, right? Yeah. Yeah. A little unique spin on it, then. Yeah. You know what? Now I can say I've been called everything. You know, because I mean I've gotten. Other names, but and okay, you know that, that's that's that, that's that's your name for me. I, I like that. I, I, I'll, I'll take. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> All right. So you know, one thing I was looking at when I was going over uh, some of your uh, some of your tour dates and things like that, and one of the things I wonder as a, as a comedian, because you have done a lot of uh, travel, like I was mentioning. I mean, and let me know if I'm wrong on this, but recently you've been in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, and. Oklahoma City, and then you've been to Milwaukee and Jonesboro, Arkansas, and uh, Rapid City, South Dakota, just to name a few. So I'm wondering, like, when you are, um, when it's time to decide, like, where you're going to go, what comedy stops you're going to go to, do you weigh in on that at all, or is it just, like, your manager who just, like, ah, uh, you know, just, like, just tell me where I got to be and I'll show up? No, I'm 90% of where I 90% decide where I'm going to be. So it's, it's a lot. It's about uh, availability, how mm -hmm. long you want me, what you're paying me, what my market is like. It's all those factors. But when you're starting out in stand up, you, you know, you take what you can get. The idea, the idea in everything in life is to work to so make sure you have options. So we have options. That means you can turn down things. It doesn't help you out. So your your goal is always to have options. That's what everything you like, the, the more options you have. So luckily I got some options. I don't have the options as a lot of elite comics, but I do have some options. But when you're starting out, you know, it's all about getting up on stage and being seen. So you want to take as many gigs as you possibly can. But obviously you also want to try to make money yeah which goes without now, saying one you got to be prepared to take L's. yeah and you had mentioned earlier like so when you were first starting out you know the options may have been a little bit different but speaking of when you were first starting out uh, i noticed that you uh one thing i read is that you used to watch uh deaf comedy jam that was one of the things that inspired you to get into comedy so whether it be people on Deaf Comedy Jam or other um, programs, who were some of the comedians who you came up watching who you enjoyed their their humor? Oh, nobody crazy. It's just the same ones we all have. You know, I think people ask me all sorts of questions of, like, the best comics all the time. I still think that Richard Pryor is the best stand-up of all time. Chappelle is closing that gap. I still think that Chris Rock has the best special of all time. 
and uh, bring the pain. And then I still think that Eddie Murphy is the funniest dude of all time. And it's not even close when you factor in everything. So all of those people, and still you throw in the Jerry Seinfeld of the world and Bill, well, Bill Burr hadn't started yet when I was, was, I was into it, but like all of those dudes, but yeah, me and my buddy in college, we were watch Def Comedy Jam. And I used to think that I could, I could do that. But that was just it. I, I'm sure if I would have saw any sort of stand up at the time, it would have it would have sparked it, uh, interest in me because it was just something that you know I was supposed to do. Yeah. Now, um, no, no. Let me ask you this because one of the things when I when I looked at your at your uh, at your website, one thing that I really liked was two parent love, and um, I was wondering where because in generally speaking, I want to ask you. Where does where did that idea kind of kind of come from? Well, it's, it's basically the name. It's I took the title after the name of a of a of a joke that I that I did from the album was so Two Parent Love," which is basically I just make fun of you know those those kids that's got two parents, how coddled they are, where that person that grew up in a little dysfunction in their house. Got a got a little bit more hunger to them. Got a little bit more bite to them, and you know, and they 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 go after things a little bit harder than the coddled kids. So that's really where that where that came from. The two parent love. It's really after a title. But I got a new album coming out soon. Uh, I haven't even named it yet, but I just filmed it last month in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. so it should be coming out in the next couple of months. We're editing it out now, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Okay. So you you worked on that in Minneapolis, and now let me ask you, right? You are based in the Chicago, right? Currently, I mean, you travel a lot, but you're based in like the Chicago area right now. Is that right? Yeah, I was born and raised in Chicago. I left a couple of times, but Chicago always calls me back. <laughs> All right. And what's uh what's the co comedy club scene like there? I mean, is, is it any? Is it's it just amazing. Like, you know, it's amazing. If, you, if you're if you a stand-up comic and you're working on your craft, you can get up twice twice a day for seven days a week. You know, there's so many clubs and so many independent rooms and so many open mics. It's just a great scene. It's a great way to uh, nurture your comedy or your yeah. craft. One of the things I didn't uh, I, I, I want to bring up is you have not only just, you know, live performances that are just in the club scene, but you've actually had some great television um, appearances as well. Like you've been on you were on Star Search back in the day. You were on Last Comic Standing. You've done a uh, show called laugh so um let me ask you is there any difference like when you're on stage is there any difference between the you know when you are just just with your audience is just in front of you and maybe like a, a local venue is there any feeling different from that versus when you know that you have potentially millions of people watching you like when you're on like an nbc show or something like that yeah, it's basically, uh, it's energy control. You know, you're it's just dealing with dealing with your emotions of it and everything. But once you get your once you get your act down and you're confident and being in front of others, you don't really try to play to the millions. You just try to play to the people in front of you. But yeah, um, yeah, it's really about controlling that uh, that that energy and don't let it consume you where you you can't function but it's just you know it's all nerves and everything but yeah i, I mean i prefer shows with bigger stakes so i like it <laughs> right <laughs> all right well before i let you go here i want to get um just the idea of tell us when if someone wants to come take a look at your one of your shows if you're gonna to happen to be in their area. What uh, what's the website that they can go to to find out your schedule? Uh, KevinBozeman.com, B-O-Z-E-M-A-N.com, and uh, you can follow me on uh, Instagram at Kevin Bozeman One. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the best way where you'll figure out my shows and my tour dates and everything. So I'm always posting and keeping people up to date. Okay, and you'll also update when that when you 
give a name to that album you worked on in Minnesota. I mean, well, you'll oh, be yeah. you know, putting that out there, yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, Okay. All right, Kevin. Well, thank you for coming on the Starnet Studios. It was good talking to you and definitely going to be looking out for that album as well as your next tour dates and television appearances. I just want to say uh, good luck to you. Thanks for having me, homeboy. I on keep it real. <laughs>